another week in the books, and now it's time for week two, game three for the Lawrence County Schools. It's the Lawrence County Sportsnet Preview Show Podcast. I'm James Dodson. Today's podcast, like all of them, delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. Make sure you give Penn Ohio Bottled Water a call for your delivery of three to five gallon, three or five gallon uh, water cooler systems. So remember, you can get cases of those 16 ounce bottles delivered to your home or work and make sure you ask about their custom labeling options. We thank them and we thank you for tuning in and as we deliver all the goods that you need for the seven games in the county this week. And how about this? All seven games, we can confirm, uh, are going to be video streamed uh, on Friday or Saturday. So if you're just a fan of county football, can't choose which game to go to, well, you can go and watch them all uh, online. But we recommend go find one to watch live and then go back and watch the rest of them all archived. You can watch them anytime, for us at least, on lcsportsnet.com. One of the games that we will have on Friday night, the Mohawk Warriors hosting the Laurel Spartans. That's our game of the week with the pair of county schools both coming in at one and one records. But Jay Rona, he sets the single game record for passing touchdowns in week zero with five touching strikes. He goes, gets his name on the on the plaque, uh, get it all uh, fixed up on the record boards. Well, that record lasted just six days because he got another five touchdown performance in the week one victory against Quaker Valley as well. Uh, Laurel's young secondary is certainly going to have its hands full uh, with Rona throwing the ball around. Uh, and then, I mean, look at the receivers. You start with uh, uh, Jay's cousin, Bobby Fadden. It looks like they're playing backyard football the way they're connecting. He had three touchdowns last week. Blake Logan, two touchdowns last week. Dante Retort, uh, two touchdowns in week zero. So they're all getting the job done through the air. And again, want to mention the uh, run game, Sam List and uh, Justin Boston, uh, each showing a good job running the football last week as well, getting a little bit more balance in that offense to go with the aerial attack that the Warriors have been putting on. Laurel, on the other hand, convincing week zero victory, but they struggled mightily against the Shanix veteran offensive line. They will be facing another veteran line in Mohawk uh, with four returning starters. Uh, here this week. Ben Hennon, he was bottled up most of the game, but he found his creases at times behind that young and very developing offensive line. Uh, and he actually scored his first of Laurel's three touchdowns in the third quarter, uh, albeit when the game was well out of hand at that point. You got to give a shout out to that entire young offensive line for Laurel. They continue to gel, get a little bit better each and every week. Got to give a big shout out though to Max Shevitz. Uh, glad he's getting some notoriety. Uh, if you haven't uh, checked it out, the uh, Spark Notes version of the story is that he uh, tore his ACL in eighth grade. They wouldn't do surgery until growth plates had kind of uh, finished up. So he played his freshman football season, played a JV season, and got some varsity time playing basically on one ACL. Well, he gets the ACL repaired, and then uh, now into his junior year, the scrimmage, he tears his other ACL. Uh, they said, well, it's going to be a couple of weeks of PT, then we'll get surgery. So wait a minute, you let me play on it last time. Basically, the doctor said if you can get, you know, range of motion is good through physical therapy in a couple of weeks, yeah, we'll let you go. Well, a couple of weeks turned into six days, and he played on opening night less than a week after tearing his left ACL, and he's playing uh, on it the entire way through. So it's a great story, and we had to uh, give a nice shout-out to, uh, to Max Shevitz on here, only a junior as well, so glad we know we'll be able to see him for another season uh, for the Spartans. Uh, that kickoff between Spartans and Warriors, 7 o'clock. Tim Continenza and I will be on the call from Warriors Stadium. The other game that we have, uh, Shenango, 1-1, one one, hosting Riverside, 0-1. Oh Riverside did not play a Week 0 game. They lost 35-7 to against Southside, the lone touchdown coming on a 20-yard uh, run from Brady Newman. The uh, Panthers ended up using two quarterbacks in that game, actually. Aiden Garcia in the first half, Ryan Theodore in the second half. The two combined for just 50 yards through the air. The name you got to watch out for, though, is junior running back Robbie Janis. He was held in check last week, but he had just shy of 1,000 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns to lead the Panthers last year uh, on the season. Uh, Shenango, man, they, just, they found a way to win. Uh, big shout out to Coach Graham and his staff and the entire team for fighting. They only registered 120 yards of offense, but they were opportunistic, and they got a very Jerome Bettis style of day uh, stat line from Jacob Cameron. How about three rushing touchdowns 
all from inside the three-yard line. Uh, I think might be more impressive, though, was that they kept Western Beaver's dynamic offense off of the board for the majority of the game and kept them in front of them, uh, not allowing the big plays. Uh, Southside, when they uh, defeated Riverside last week, they got the ball up and down the field with their dual-threat quarterback uh, putting up 35 points in the game. Watching Sam Patton, maybe some run pass options to try to uh, ease up those running lanes uh, for Cameron and for Landon Albertini and company and maybe try to find some work on the outside <clears throat> for Fedrizi. That's a 7 p.m. kickoff for the Cat Fight, the Panthers and the Wildcats from Glenn Pop Johnson Stadium, Frank Bonjavengo Field. Limon J. Moan will be on the call for that one from Shenango. Those are our two feature games on Friday night, but there are another three games on Friday. That's it, four games on Friday and a fifth on Saturday, and we'll preview those when we return the Lawrence County Preview Show podcast, delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. Don't get left out to dry. Call the Penn Ohio Bottled Water Company for the fastest and most efficient bottled water delivery service in the area. Penn Ohio offers bottled water ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallon jugs, perfect for your next event or office water cooler system. Also, don't forget to ask about their custom labeling options. Visit PennOhioBottledWater.com for more information and to get a quote on their delivery services. Whether it's at home, in the office, or on the sidelines, Penn Ohio has you covered. Four other games on Friday night. Let's kick right into it. Union, Union against Cornell. Easy for me to say. Uh, Union at 2-0 and o, uh, coming in against Cornell with a 1-1 one one record. And Union's offense, talk about a strong beginning. 40 points and 34-point performances uh, in their first two games. Just to put that in uh, comparison, uh, the most they scored in the game last year, I believe, was... Uh, or the most they allowed, excuse me, in the game was... Uh, the 36 in the playoffs, but they uh, they didn't have many games that they were scoring above the 30s consistently, especially uh, uh, towards the end of the season. You know, you take away your your mercy rule games against the uh, lower levels of the conference. Uh, Union's offense just has been very strong to begin this year. Braylon Thomas, of course, the uh, main uh, component of it. Your quarterback, 70-yard touchdown run last week. He now has over 100 rushing yards in both games so far, and I like that they're throwing a, a bit of a different look. Lucas Stanley getting some snaps at quarterback throughout the course of the game. He has a touchdown uh, as the number two quarterback in each game as well. His one last week going to Dane Jonkey. He's leading the receiving core now with four touchdowns in the first two weeks. Cornell scored 20 points in each of their first two games. A 20-19 win over Seton LaSalle. And then, or that was a loss to Seton LaSalle, excuse me. And then a 20-6 win over Manesson. Their quarterback, C.J. Jackson, four touchdowns in the first two weeks. And it is homecoming, by the way, at the home of the Scotties. You can watch that game from Scotland, from Scotland Lane, excuse me, Sox Russo Stadium, uh, courtesy of Union Scotties Media. Elwood City against Carlinton, a battle of one and one uh, teams here. Elwood City quarterback, Chris Smiley, he's off to a great start as the junior. He has a passing and rushing touchdown in each of the first two games for the Wolverines. The offense sort of sputtered in the second half against Union last week. They do have this one last non-conference tune-up against Carlinton, and their win against Carlinton last year was the one that snapped the 27-game losing streak for Elwood City. Speaking of the uh, Carlinton Cougars, they had a mercy rule victory, 46-6 over Carrick, but then were mercy ruled themselves against Riverview, 42-0 last week. Watch out for Devontae Dean, the quarterback threw for four touchdowns in Week 0, Ryan Lewis, has four total touchdowns all in that opening week victory for the Carlton Cougars as well. What I'm looking for in this game is for Elwood to get Elijah Palmer McCain back rolling. Yeah, he had 20-plus carries last week, but couldn't top the century mark and couldn't get into the end zone. Look at what Riverview did to Carlton last week. 386 total rushing yards, two backs each over 130 yards, and the third one going for 70 yards. This could be a game where you let EPM just eat all night. EPM and company on ECS streaming Elwood City Wolverines. We thank them uh, for their continued support and they're going to be busy with eight home games this year for Elwood. The Shanick and Ambridge, another non-conference game here in week two, game three. 
a shootout last year. Both teams in the 40s as the Lancers narrowly defeated the Bridgers. I think we're going to get a little lower scoring game uh, this year. Uh, Nishanik happy to see that goose egg go off the board, though, after being shut out in Week 0. Gino Mazzocco and company settled in nicely last week. Mazzocco runs for a couple of scorers, perfect 9-for-9, nine nine, throwing the football as well. And Dom Cubelis with a touchdown both on the ground and a pick 6. Ambridge, they held off Freedom in a close one, 14-7, a battle to the very end. They were led by a 111-yard performance and a touchdown on the ground from Carlito Chandler. You can check that one out, courtesy of our friends at NHS Media Productions. The final game for Friday night, Newcastle on the road against Armstrong. The 0-2 Canes have another tough trip. There's not an easy game on this Newcastle schedule, let's face it. Uh, they go down to Catanning, facing the Armstrong Riverhawks. I uh, want to see Kayvon Gardner continue to rack up some uh, some big numbers, try to get those big play uh, potentials. Uh, he Both he and Malik Jefferson topped the century mark in Week 0. Gardner close to it again and had the lone touchdown in the Week 1 loss, 42-6 against Mars last week. We'll see if the Canes can keep finding ways to get the ball into the hands of their speedster, and hopefully they can get more time for Kyrell Harris to find some receivers open down the field because it's an Armstrong team that has given up some pretty big point totals actually over the first two weeks. Uh, last week's loss actually coming at the new Heinz Field down at Aliquippa. Uh, very uh, fun to be able to say that you're playing a regular season game at Heinz Field. Though we know of course it's not the old Heinz Field now Akersher. We're talking about the new uh, the new pit at Aliquippa. Uh, but speaking of, Al- of Aliquippa and their win over Armstrong, uh, Colt Sprankle, the quarterback, had a touchdown last week. Uh, the sophomore also threw for three touchdowns uh, in week zero. Three of those total touchdowns of his four total now have been caught by Ian Olson, the junior wide receiver, a very talented threat, and uh, he played very well last year at, uh, at Newcastle in this game. Also want to watch out, Alex Patton kind of floating under the radar, but he's averaging seven yards per carry. Check out Facebook Live for coverage of the Canes and the Riverhawks. And finally, a Saturday night non-region game up in District 10. How about this? It's the 50th all-time meeting between the Hounds and the Mustangs, Wilmington versus Mercer. And this is a game that honestly could be done in maybe 90 minutes of real time, considering the way these two teams run the football. Wilmington's wing tee, Mercer's Delaware wing tee. They're the top two running teams uh, in Mercer County, with the Hounds attempting 50 runs per game. Mercer right behind them at 47 rushing attempts per contest. Mainly, though, for Wilmington, I think they're just hoping they can secure a win without needing a go-ahead touchdown in the final minute. Coach Brandon Fillion, my goodness, his gray hair total must have doubled in the last two weeks uh, after the what well, looked like it could have been a game-winning touchdown in week zero with about 40 seconds left. Uh, Sharps ends up coming right back and scoring their own game winner. But then last week, Ben Miller gets another apparent game-winning touchdown with 15 seconds left. This time, they're able to hold on to that 21-14 victory over Greenville. That touchdown for Miller gave him his second straight multi-score game. And he is uh, the leading rusher right now uh, in Mercer County and number two behind uh, just uh, Braylon Thomas, actually, in Lawrence County stat uh, as well. Uh, Mercer on the other side, Damian Maddox, he's leading Mercer County with seven rushing touchdowns. Three of them came in week zero, and he had all four Mercer touchdowns last week. Uh, they've also had the flair for the dramatic, actually, when you look at the uh, the Mercer team so far this year. Mustangs went for two in week zero with a minute 40 remaining against Reynolds, but they could not convert. They ended up losing that game 28-27 as a result. Last week, they held on down the stretch to win by three, 31-28 over Iroquois. So both these teams have played in two very close contests. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another one here on Saturday night. And I think the big key to this game is obviously we know Maddox and Miller are going to do their thing. What's the secondary rushing going to look like? Alex Lefteris from Mercer, Wilmington Chase Mitchell Tree. I think both those secondary options to hope ease that defense, um, lift the load off the workhorse, and you know maybe allow some other holes. If you uh, can't focus on just the one back, uh, that might be the big part of it. Maybe a second quick key. Who can throw the ball? Because neither team really has uh, attempted it much. Buda Book has thrown just 16 attempts, so eight per game uh, in the first two weeks. But five of those passes have been picked off. Ryder Chiappini on the other side, he's attempted even fewer passes. Just 12 attempted with two interceptions for Mercer. 
Before we uh, wrap it up, I do have a fun factoid, though, courtesy of ProfessorBriggs.com. Uh, especially for Mercer County information, there is no one better uh, to get your football Friday information from, or in this case, football Saturday, because the last time that Mercer played a Saturday game in Wilmington, wasn't even supposed to happen. They had to move a regular season finale to the turf field at Wilmington uh, because the uh, Mercer field conditions just weren't great that year. It was a really, really uh, rainy and even snowy um, October made it very difficult, so they moved the game to Wilmington. Prior to that, you have to go all the way back to 1928 was the last time Mercer played a Saturday game in Wilmington. They played that game actually, though, not at Wilmington High School, but at Westminster College. It was part of a, an opening act on Westminster's homecoming day, uh, where Westminster played a game against Teal uh, immediately afterwards. Funny enough, Westminster, again, hosts Teal this Saturday afternoon. And by the way, for anybody with the uh, superstitious inclinations out there, Wilmington won that game back in 1928 by a 19-0 scoreline. Will history repeat itself? You can find out by watching with us at lcsportsnet.com. Lee Moan and Jay Moan again will be on the call for that non-region game up in D10, Saturday night, 7 o'clock kickoff. We thank you for kicking off your weekend with us. Thanks to Penn Ohio Bottled Water delivering us all this great information. Remember, they can deliver hot or cold water for you at the click of a button. Enjoy a cup of coffee as well with their bottom-loading water cooler option. Let Paul Penn Ohio Bottled Water do the heavy lifting, lifting excuse me, and bring refreshing water straight to your door. We're glad we can bring these factoids and previews right to your door wherever you want to watch us and listen to us. It's the Preview Show Podcast on the Lawrence County Sportsnet, powered by LCAP.